and welcome to episode 46 of the Crochet Circle podcast. This one is called Tipsy Crocheting. Tipsy Crocheting? Drunken Crocheting? Which one is it? I can't remember what I called it. What did I call it? Right, it's now called Tipsy Crocheting. I don't know what I'd called it before. Welcome to episode 46. I promise I'm not drunk as I record this. Uh, Tipsy crocheting refers to something that I'll tell you about in a wee bit. Hello! <laughs> Come on in, I am waving. My name is Faye and this is my monthly podcast where I talk a lot about crochet and some of the other crafts and bits and pieces that I am up to. So come on in and welcome. Hello if you're on video, hello if you're on audio, and the ever-increasing numbers over on the audio um, podcast had a little look today. Where have you lot all come from then? I don't know if I've been signposted by somebody else, I don't know what's happened, but I got a little bit of a shock when I looked at the um, numbers this morning. So hello to all of you. I record for video and for audio, so I try to be really quite descriptive and um, you can find all of my show notes over in the Podbean app and everything is linked. So, what do I have for you today? I have got um, a couple of very quick old dog new tricks. Um, there's a final destination, including a jumper for a certain uh, yarn festival, which is... Uh, this weekend ah. um, what else do I have there's a little bit of feeding the habit there are some potential en routes um, some quick news beats and also some shadows. so let's get on with it um, yeah let's start with the old dog and new tricks a couple of really quick ones for you today this is a new one that I discovered probably about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, maybe longer actually, around about the time that I got my new cake winder because I was doing a lot with it in, a, in all its glory. I loved it. And one of the things that I find is quite often when I'm winding cakes and I put um, skeins of yarn onto my Swift, I find that the skeins can be a little bit tangled up. And then when I start to cake that up, it can create a pull between the skein and my cake winder and I'm sure others have experienced this and it can create um, a kind of a different tension in parts of my cake and create more tension because the swift is struggling to get round because the skein hasn't been put on evenly. So what I thought I would do is quickly show you how it is that I've been getting over that um, when I pop my skein onto um, my Swift. And it's what I can only put down to calling snapping your skein. So the skein that I've got in front of me is quite a longish skein. It's from Cosmic Strings and I'll talk about this in a little bit um, of time when I get to another section. But sometimes if you've handled a skein a lot, the different strands will be a little bit twisted and it can just get a little bit muddled. And so what you want to do before you pop the skein onto your skein winder is find a spot where, sorry if you can hear, it sounds like we've got an ambulance going past. Um, find a spot where your skein has been tied. And from that point, look and make sure that all of your strands are going in the right direction. Because if you have just even one strand that has been moved and is going in the wrong direction, that's really going to muck up your cake winding. So that is the first place to start. And then the second thing to do is get the skein and place it onto your hands. Use your thumbs as almost like stoppers. And this is what I mean by the snap. What you want to do is quickly move your arms out and you're snapping the skein. And what that will help to do is realign each of the strands so that it's more like... Um, they were when they came off the skein winder in the industrial part of the process. So you're just, can you hear that? I'm sure you can. You're snapping them straight and making them go back into their uniform placement, basically. That is what you're looking for. Now this one has got pom hair on it already, which I don't know how because he's not allowed into my stash palace. But that snapping also gives you a really nice width of yarn to then pop onto your swift and I promise you 
this really helps with not getting um, misplaced tangled up yarn on your swift. It just makes it a little bit smoother and gives you more even ten um, tension when you're caking your yarn up. That is how you get the best cake possible um, when you are getting ready to start a new project. Right, so that was trick number one. Trick number two works for crochet and knitting. The other night I was uh, up in bed and I was working on a cabled sock and my cable needle was downstairs and to put it frankly I could not be bothered to go downstairs and uh, go get the cable needle. I was being really lazy. So I was looking for what else was around me and I found a Kirby grip, which you might know as a bobby pin. We call them Kirby grips in the UK. It is the perfect thing for taking off stitches in your knitting and pushing to the back and the front because they're really secure and for getting back onto your needle, particularly if you've got a lighter weight um, skin of yarn like a four ply. And um, I was talking with Mara, who's Ruby to Tombstone on Instagram, and she was saying it's one of the things that she's seen recommended for cables for holding live stitches for crochet cabling as well. So it's a thing, although I thought I'd just made it up because it was the closest thing to hand and I thought it was amazing. Um, actually, it's a thing. Lots of people use bobby pins and Kirby grips um, and because they actually close quite tightly and it's easy to put them to the front or to the back depending on which way you're working your crochet or knitted cables. It's perfect and they're lightweight and you can grip them onto your project as well. So I think from now on in, every time I'm doing crochet and knitting cables, I might just use Kirby grips and bobby pins instead of anything fancier because it did the job brilliantly. It's also just a great way of locking down your end stitch if you're leaving a project part way done. Um, it's a great way of just locking off that end stitch. And I quite often have my fringe up in a Kirby grip up, up and out the way. So I've always got access to a, a cable needle. So that's my second quick old dog new tricks. I told you there were little ones this month. Let's move on to final destination. <sighs> Shall we just go with the biggie first? Shall we just get it out there? Oh look, I have a jumper. Oh look, I have a jumper that's ready to go to Perth. I love it. Now, would you like to know why this podcast is called Tipsy Crocheting? Where is it? There it is. Because I think I had a good couple of glasses of wine in me when I managed to put my hook through some of the wrong stitches. I will add a photo into the show notes so that you audio folks can see it. Um, so I have got a little line of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 11, 12 stitches um, where I've put them in the wrong loop and... It's maybe seven rows from the bottom before I started the rib. Oh, and I noticed it once I'd nearly finished the rib and I was like, do I, do I rip you back? Or do I just suck it up buttercup? And <laughs> clearly I went the suck it up buttercup route because like all of that in the rib was probably maybe... 10 hours work that I would have had to rip out and frankly I've done enough frogging on this project I didn't feel like going back and doing it again and it's a very good reminder for me to not have a couple of glasses of wine in me and then crochet on something that I really want to be perfect never mind so I finished it's been blocked the ends have been woven in I took it down to the Southern Wool Show because I knew that um, some of you lovely crochet clanners were coming and you wanted to see it. So I know some of you have already seen it, but I'm just popping it on. I love it. The fit is really good. I love the colours. I put my skin. Um, I love the variegated bits. It's long enough for my big long arms. Um, it fits my boobs in, it's nice on the back, it's the length that I wanted it to be. I made a few little bits and pieces of changes, not a lot. Um, 
and I've popped up full project notes on Ravelry. I just needed to add some final um, object photos of me wearing it so you can see the fit and what I've done. But I'm so chuffed. This is the best fitting crochet garment I have ever made. And I've made a few now and this is the one that actually is really well fitted to my body shape and type and I'm really comfortable in it. Sometimes I've made things that um, just aren't quite right, whether that's because they're a bit baggy or the arms are baggy or there, are, there have been elements of it that I'm just not completely satisfied with. Blurred Lines is a completely different kettle of fish. There is nothing I would change about the fit of this jumper and the way that I've got it on me. I really love it. The collar's wide enough and deep enough for me. Like I said, the arms are long enough. The cuffs aren't too tight. I didn't do the long extended cuffs on them. I took them right down so that they're the same um, depth as the collar. And I did a slightly narrower rib down at the bottom as well. Again, because it was the right length for me. And I wanted it to paid up more with the cuffs and the collar than having an extended rib. And it was quicker. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I was working towards was not going into my fourth, um, sorry, into my third ball of the main colour. So I've actually got one skein left. So this took... Um, two and a bit skeins of my contrast colour and almost dot on two skeins of my main colour and I love it, I really love it and I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this so the, the blend of yarn that I've used was 50% um, Corridale, 50% mohair and when I had finished it and I tried it on and I'd been trying it on right the way through I was like oh you're quite you're a bit scratchy. I know I'm wearing you, and I can take all sorts of fibre up on my skin. And I was, I was just a little bit concerned. But actually, washing, blocking, it's softened, um, and it's just lovely. And it's just going to keep on softening with wear. And it's so warm that I might not be able to survive an entire podcast with it on. But I have a blurred line sweater, and I am going to be wearing it. Um, down the runway at Perth Festival of Yarn so I'm so chuffed to have had this done um, I think I talk about all of the bits and pieces that I learned from doing this project in Ravelry and I would say as I said last month the main thing that I learned is if you are doing a project like this alternate your skeins don't assume that just because the naked eye can't initially see any subtle changes in your yarns You'll see it when you put them together. That's certainly the case that I had. And I can still see there are little darker patches even though I have um, alternated the two. That's because I had to concentrate on the darker skein right down to the very end. But nothing I can do about that. I wasn't going to get Bernie to um, dye up another skein for me. So I am well chuffed with my blurred line sweater. Love it, love it, love it. I think this is going to be a firm favourite this winter. And like I say, it is toasty, toasty warm. I love the way it fades in, um, in the striping from one colour to the next. And I also like the way I've got kind of zigzags coming down my arm and across all of the variegated parts. It's almost like Harry Potter zigzags. So... I'm very happy. I'm particularly happy that I've got it done. I reckon by the time I'd finished, this is about 100 hours worth of work. So it was no small feat. That's including the ripping out that I had to do and then the recrocheting. So had I not had to do that, maybe about 75 hours worth of work. Um, So yeah, it was quite a task to undertake. But what I've got out of that is a very wearable, very snuggly, beautiful jumper. Um, and I, like I said, my favourite crocheted garment to date, by some measure, I think. I can see me wearing this a lot. And when you compare that to the Ezra sweater, which I haven't yet worn since I showed it off in the podcast. Fair enough, we've been in summer, but I'm not, every time I see it in my drawer and I'm not like, oh, let me wear that jumper. I want to wear that jumper. Whereas 
with this one I think it's far more likely so I'm, I'm just so happy that I've got a finished jumper <laughs> right I'm going to take it off because it's hot and I want to slap a coffee and I cannot spill coffee down this jumper before I wheel it down the runway in Perth Love, love, love. So that is finished item number one. Finished item number two, I will pop a photo up of and I'll put it in the show notes, but I don't actually know what it is. Um, my office is also my studio and it's where I record the podcast from. And there, I have just got boxes and stock everywhere and somewhere in one of the boxes I haven't yet unpacked from the Southern Wool Show and repacked for Perth Festival of Yarn is a cactus that I made because um, I made it from the Crocheted Succulents book by Emma Varnum. I got this book ages ago on pre-order and it is brilliant. I love succulents. I love cacti. I kill half uh, houseplants on a regular basis. So... Um, I thought far better for me to actually crochet up some succulents and cacti that I can't kill. Um, The other reason for doing it was because I've started selling this book in my shop and taking it to shows. And um, I, in advance of selling it, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to sell it. And to do that, I basically test out a book, test out the patterns and make sure it's workable. Um, And... So that's what I did with this one. So I have a a sample somewhere in my office, but I'll pop a photo up. Um, But I really like this book. If it's one that you've got and you haven't got to it and had a little play with it, I thoroughly recommend you do. It's really quick, easy projects. Cactus took me, I think, about five hours to do, and it's done in, in little bits, so you could pick it up and put it down. And it only took 50 grams of Rowan uh, Glacy cotton that was it um, and that was me using a larger um, a heavier weight of yarn than was suggested in the book because I wanted a slightly bigger um, succulent and it was where are you the Mexican snowball that I did um, so yeah I just sat out in the garden one, one day over the bank holiday weekend and that was one of the things I made and the second thing I made, you'll laugh because you know what I'm like about moths. But the second thing I crocheted was an actual moth. For exactly the same purpose, I wanted to know whether or not I should start selling the um, Lali Lala book, the uh, Beatles, Bugs and Butterflies ones. I've used her patterns before. And they're really, really detailed. She has a lot of information, but I didn't know if the book was as detailed, and it is. So it's actually really easy to work with. Um, But I wanted to test it out before I started selling it, and it is full of some of the cutest little bugs and caterpillars and snails and all sorts of things. And again, it's really quite modular. It's easy to work from. But I wanted to make sure that it was suitable for me to sell. And so I made them off. And it's just, it's beautiful. If you had um, little kids or kids that you wanted to crochet for, this is such a lovely little thing to make for them. I love that it's got so much detail, even just on the wings at the back. The little hat is a separate element so you can build it up or take it down depending on what you want. She has instructions for making a cocoon. The wings come off of it. Um, so it can just be a little caterpillar depending on who you're making it for. It's just really nice and they're cute things. Um, and there was a lot of love for this little thing when it was on my stall at the Southern Mall Show at the weekend. Um, because yeah it's just a really sweet little piece of amigurumi and the only moth that actually is allowed in my studio or my house because live ones not so good but just so cute so so cute so I'll put a photo in the show notes again 
Um, but I really enjoyed working this up. And again, I could come at it um, piece by piece. I didn't have to sit down and concentrate too hard on it. I could do the hat one morning while I was having my cup of tea and then start working on the wings. So, yeah, I really enjoyed pulling this little thing together. And that has been it for my um, finished objects this month. Um, I'm amazed that I even got those two little things done after doing the mammoth task of my blurred line sweaters. But, uh, yeah, that's been it. So, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in this month is by no means a regular part of the podcast. But I just wanted to kind of fill you in on what my life has been like this uh, this year so far and what I'm hoping for in the final few months of 2019. I basically have been on the road doing yarn show after yarn show after yarn show and pop up and I've been up and down the UK road networks, I've been on ferries, I've been here, there and everywhere over the last few months and I love it. I absolutely love what I do. Um, however, I cannot wait to get to next Sunday night after Perth Festival of Yarn to get home, unpack all of the stock and to chill out. I'm like, I'm so, I'm done in. <laughs> I'm shattered. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to getting a bit of time out and a bit of balance back in my life because it, it just feels like everything has been on a bit of a loop for the last couple of months in particular where it is literally back the car up to my studio unpack repack (laughs) repack the car go and do another show unpack repack and that's like (laughs) groundhog day um like i say i love doing shows they're great fun it's so nice getting out and meeting everybody and um yeah come friends coming to see me it's just, it's lovely. I really love that aspect, but I am so ready to sit and hibernate a little bit and drink more tea and just sit and get a bit of crafting done. Um, yeah, so, yeah, like life has just been a little bit too full on for me. Um, and one of the things I'm working towards in the rest of the year is just chilling out a little bit. I've got a big project that needs to come to fruition, which I've been working on for months. And um, between now and when I go to Iceland, I really need to put a lot of effort into that. But it's the kind of project where I get to sit and craft for days on end. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, And the other thing that I'm trying to do is instill a bit more balance into my life going into 2020. Um, If you've been a long-term follower of the podcast, you'll know that a couple of years ago I started giving myself a word for every year and that started with clarity in 2018 and then this year's word has been structure and that really helped me to focus into what it is that I wanted to do and loads of the things that I've introduced this year have really helped me with running the podcast, running the businesses that I've got, so the design work and the online shop and the yarn shows has really set me on a good steading for um, 2019. And as a kind of sideline, if anybody is interested, just ping me a message, but I'll happily tell you the software that I've been using to help me just manage juggling all the different elements of my life Um. And also some of the podcasts that I've been listening to. I listen to a lot of business podcasts. So if you're interested, let me know and I will pass them on to you. Um, I might do a quick blog post on it, actually. Um, But I've already thought of what my um, word for 2020 is and it's going to be centre. And I've chosen centre because there's a very specific sentiment behind it, which is to say no more often (laughs) um but that feels really negative to me and it's not meant as a negative and I didn't want to just have no as my word that's essentially what I'm going to start doing I'm just going to start saying no to things and no to people because I am a bit of a people pleaser and that's quite dangerous and it's I don't people please because I want to be liked I people please because I want to be helpful and I want to move the industry on and I want to just generally be a nice person and help people that need help. Um, But that doesn't always help me, my business, my family, my downtime. 
So I'm going to get better at assessing what needs to be done versus what is a nice to have. And my premise for doing this, and I've I've talked about this a long for you know a long long time. Saying yes to something is never saying yes to one thing. It's more like saying yes to ten little things to get to that final outcome. So if I say no to something that somebody else wants me to do, what I'm actually doing is freeing up ten things that I can do for me, for my family, for my household, for my businesses. Of course, I'm still going to be doing loads of stuff for other people, but I'm just going to be a little more wary of what it is that I'm saying yes to and stop trying to just make everybody happy and be better at making my own self happy and my own circumstances happy. And hopefully then that filters into the podcast as well because I should then have more time for this stuff. That's the theory anyway. And the other part of um, centre as my word is just about bringing in core balance to my life again and pulling everything back to my own centre and being a bit kinder on myself and um, a bit of self-care. I, as I put it to a friend earlier, I was like, I can't really... It, the words I want to use are no and selfish, but they feel too negative. And she said... It's not selfish, it's self-care. And I thought, yeah, you're right. (laughs) And that's what I need. 2019 has just been too busy and I need to just pull it back, but in a sensible manner and make things a little more sustainable. So that's what I'm going to be working towards. I find it hard to say no, so it's going to be interesting for me. Um, But yeah, that's what I need to do. So like I say, this is not a regular, um, but I just thought... It might be interesting for you to see what I'm up to and um, how the next three months of 2019 are hopefully going to pan out for me because it should involve a lot of tea, a lot of sitting with my feet up and getting a lot of crafting done. That's what I'm hoping for. That would be nice, wouldn't it? With autumn there and just like the tingle of leaves. Love it. Right. Let's take you into en route. I've got nothing. (laughs) I literally have got no personal crochet projects on the go at the moment. Um, And that's partly because I've just come out of Blurred Lines and the two little ones, so Mothy and the um, Mexican Snowball Succulent. That said, I have got something that by the time you are listening and watching this, I'll be beasting through because my plan is to start it tonight while I'm editing down this podcast. Um, when I was saying about snapping the yarn under Old Dog New Tricks, I was using a skein of beautiful yarn, and I do mean beautiful. It's by Cosmic Strings. The colourway is called Pisces, and it's a very um, large skein of yarn. It's 120 grams. And it is 65% superwash merino, 20% silk and 15% yak. And it's a four ply fingering sock weight. And it's because it's 120 grams, it's actually 480 metres, which is 525 yards. And it is a luxurious. If you've never felt anything that's got that merino silk yak mix in it. Oh my word, it's soft. It's just so lovely. Yak has got um, a bit of a greyish colour to it so when it's then dyed you get some real subtle changes throughout the um, colouring. Silk by its very nature is quite lustrous so what you've got is this slightly heathered with darker runs through it in the yarn and this amazing shine on it. It is a really beautiful blend to work with. And I put it out on Instagram and I gave you guys the chance to choose which colour of um, mohair blend I'm putting with this. And there was a choice between a peachy colour, which I was calling soft and peachy, or a very dark charcoal grey colour, which paired up with this teal of the um, Cosmic Strings colour I was calling dark and stormy. And the overwhelming majority wanted dark and stormy. Yes. Which is good because that's what I was aiming towards anyway. So 
what am I going to make with it? Um, do you remember last month I talked about the amazing um, cull that Lady Di and the lady from the Knitmore Girls are running, which is on Instagram, it's hashtag Ryan by Pock Sweater. And I said that I was going to come forward with a pattern and some yarn that I wanted to use. And that is exactly what I've done. So yarn and um, cosmic strings is out of my stash. And the dyers behind this are Foo and B. And um, so what you're meant to use is a yarn which is um, dye, hand dyed by a, a by pork hand, hand dyer. Cosmic strings is. And it was a moustache. Now, my kind of get out with that is that um, I didn't have any more hair and I'm on a yarn ban. So I'm not going to break that ban for a uh, cal. My main colour is by a BIPOC hand dyer. And therefore I went to stash and I found some Rico fashion romance that I have had sat in my stash for a very long time and I'm talking maybe four years now so it's time for that to come out I'm not just going to go and buy yarn for the sake of buying yarn I want to use what I've got that's the whole point of me being on a yarn band um, so this is not just quite so lovely but it is where's the thingy 50% acrylic 30% mohair 20% wool so it's kind of 50-50 natural versus acrylic and I had the right amount in my stash and the two actually complement each other really nicely. So, so these are going to become a Maya shawl and the designer is Helder Knagari. It's beautiful. The shawl was in inside crochet number 109. It's a really simple triangular shawl. I think it uses linen stitch and it goes from the main colour held double I think and then a row just with the mohair and then back into main colour and um, the mohair. I'm really looking forward to it and I think these two colours, this quite deep teal with the luster of the um, the silk in it and the softness of the yak versus this very charcoal grey are just going to look amazing together and really a really wearable colour palette for me as well, whether I'm wearing navy or black which tend to be like my two um winter coat colors so i'm hoping that with this shawl i've got some nice crossover with my um two main winter coats i'm rather excited so this is getting started tonight in fact the minute i finish recording i'm going straight up to skein up my um cosmic strings and get cracking with it there's every chance I'm going to play around with hook size as well. Can't remember what the hook size is um, for the shawl, but I'm probably going to have to go up because my um, the Rico Fashion Romance, the mohair blend, is thicker than a normal um, Kid Silk Haze mohair is. So I need to have a little bit of a play around with that. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Now, the other thing to mention is that I'm actually going to meet Hilda for the first time. We've been messaging each other on Instagram for a good wee while now, and she's so lovely. You'll often see her designs in Inside Crochet. She's a really talented designer, and her use of colour is just, it's beautiful. She knows how to pull colours together. She's got a very different colour palette from me. Hilda loves a a kind of peachy pink and a rose pink and the more pastel end with little pops of colour in there as well. Um, so I suspect my shawl is going to look very different from hers. However, um, Helda is doing a talk at Yarn Deal this year and I'm going to listen to her. She was doing a talk all about being a crochet designer. Um, there are still tickets available. It's two o'clock on the Saturday at Yarn Deal. So if you fancy it, I'll be in the audience, sat there, cheerleading Hilda on. Um, and I think tickets are only £5 to go and see Hilda talk. And she's the only one in, in Yarndale that I'm going to go and listen to. So, um, yeah, it would be lovely if more of us were going to offer her support and, and cheerlead her. Because, um, she's a, like I say, she's a wonderful designer. And I'm so pleased that I finally get to meet her and... Hopefully we're going to go and have a cup of tea after her talk as well and have a little bit of chat up. And it, um, yeah, it may lead to more things for the 
Crochet Circle podcast in the future. I shall say no more about that. But that's what I'm doing for the um, round by pox sweater. That's my that's my choice. And then if I get the chance and if I get through that quite quickly, because I really want to be wearing that shawl when I'm sat listening to Hilda talk, I think it would be amazing for her to um, talk and see people sat in the audience wearing her her designs. Um, so if I've done that, then the next one that I might crack on with is Claudia Crochet Luna has also released um, a pattern. It's her first ever pattern and it's called the Encanto Wrap and it's available on Ravelry now. <laughs> and I'm so proud of her because Claudia's not designed before and um, as she puts it, she's got mad respect for designers because it's not, it's really not easy to do. Um, it's easy to come up with the idea and the concept but then actually getting it down on paper, getting it written up into a, a design, is it's really time consuming, it's really hard as well. So fair play to you, Claudia. She has done it and it's up on Ravelry to buy now. So if I get through my Maya shawl, Encanto Wrap is one of the other things that I would like to do in time for Rhinebeck. That won't be in time for a yarn deal. Partly because in my head, I mean, do you remember maybe... Five minutes ago I said I was going to be taking it easier after Perth. But I've already set deadlines for myself for Yarn Deal, which is the end of September. I would also like to be wearing my bark sweater to Yarn Deal. But I suspect the bark sweater is really quick to work up. But I would, that's what... <laughs> I am a ridiculous human being, like... Oh. The person that I should just be saying no to is myself. Should I mean, shouldn't I? That's what I need to do. I need to tell myself, no, it's not about other people. It's about me setting ridiculous goals and aspirations for myself. That said, I still want to be wearing a bark sweater at Yarndale. Fingers crossed. I would love to be rocking that. So if I get the Maya shawl done first, then it's a bark sweater and then it's an Encanto wrap by Claudia. I've got the yarn, I've already done the swatching for the bark, it's achievable. Yeah, that's what my lineup is anyway, that's what I'm going to be working towards. So next podcast, there should be a finished object and final destination, and maybe two, and there will also be um, the beginnings of either the jumper or the encounter wrap. It feels quite good to have these things lined up and ready to go. Right, so that really is it for en route. So I'm going to scoot on to feeding the habit. My yarn van is going well. Um, so is my friend. She's also doing it, but she's doing a 12 month and she is, we're keeping each other strong. Every time one of us wants to falter, we message the other one and say, talk sense to me, tell me I'm not meant to be doing this, tell me off, tell me no. And then what usually happens is that I send her a photo of me, a very stern looking photo going, no, no, you cannot buy yarn. No, you cannot buy fabric um, because we both have issues. So my ban is going really well. I am two and a half months into it and I have not bought a single skin of yarn that is not for work purposes. At the weekend, I got three skeins of yarn. One of them is not for crochet or knitting at all. It's actually for embroidery stuff that I need to check out and that's for the business. And two skeins of a lace weight yarn came from Garth Knorr, but that's for a design that I'm doing for them. So I have not purchased yarn for personal usage whatsoever. And they are the first three skeins of yarn to pass the threshold since I started the my yarn band, my six month yarn band and I think if I do really well with it and get all the way until the 21st of December then I might allow myself to buy one precious skein of yarn and then go straight back into another six month band might be added a little winter solstice purchase and then no again and that's it that said birthday and Christmas yarn is allowed so I could just get a special skein as Christmas yarn 
But yeah, I'm doing really well and I'm loving getting through my stash and, you know, stash diving for the projects that I need to do because my stash is quite extensive and I can't see me tackling a project that I don't already have enough stash for and suitable yarn for as well because I could actually open a yarn shop if I wanted to. So that's been really good, but... I still have had some little things um, turn up and appear. Not that I was expecting them. Do you remember last month? And I put it on. Sorry, I've just barked at you. What a disgusting child. Do you remember last month? I um, showed off a print that I got from Ailey, um, which is Lorna's daughter. I loved it so much. I pinged Ailey a message and said I'd like to buy some from you. Um, to give out to friends and then I just had an envelope arrive via Lorna and she'd sent me five copies of the print I mean that's lovely but that's not why I asked I wanted to be Ailey for her work so I'm hoping to see Lorna at Perth Festival of Yarn this weekend and I will be stuffing some cash into her and to pass to her daughter because Ailey is an artist and I want to pay her for her hard work and for her talent. So I have five, two of which are going straight out to people that I want to send them to. But that means that I have three that I want to give away on the podcast. So if you like Ailey's print as much as I do, then all you need to do is leave me a little note on one of three places and you can enter in all three places if you like um but youtube podbean and instagram if you're really clever you will go and leave a comment in podbean because nobody ever does and i will be doing a random number generator through youtube one through instagram and one through podbean so if you're the only person that does it through podbean you'll be the person that automatically wins now I've said that, more of you obviously are going to go to Pogbean and leave a comment there. Um, but if you start the comment with, um, uh, let me see, I could say Ailey, but I think some of you will struggle to spell Ailey the Scottish way. Um, if you start it with wool is yarn, something like that, then it just means I know what it is in the comments and I know what I'm looking for and then I can um, kind of grade you all out. And do the random number generator. Um, so yeah, start it with wool is yarn. And give me... Um, that. That's all I need, basically. Wool is yarn is a comment that I know that you would like to win a version of this print. And I will get them sent out. And that's open across the globe. Because it's a lovely thin light thing that I can just pop into a hardened envelope and send out to you. So no matter where you are in the globe, I will happily... Um, get this out to you. I really like this print. Mine is already, I said last time, that I was going to have a little bit of a rearrange in my office and I was going to put up some artwork, which if you're watching, you can see I've got um, like a, a wire thing where I can put up different things every season. I've already put up my autumnal wreath with mushrooms and um, little bits of crocheted acorns and stuff on it. I've put up my British Breeds poster Um I've got a plant hanging and over, which you can't see, but over to my right, I have got my print from Ely and Lorna that has been framed up and off it goes. And I have also got my painting from Charlie, Love Charlie um, podcast, uh, which is all above my desk. So everything's looking like if you take the stock out of it, the rest of my office looks really nice now. But it's just that I can't, I have to keep on stepping over boxes to get in and out of my office. <laughs> But that will change tomorrow when I pack the car for Perth. So that's the print, which is lovely. It's such a nice thought. And I just, I didn't expect it. It was lovely when it turned up. Um, The other thing is that within the shop, I've started selling um, Yale's crocheted bead necklaces. I love them. I've got one, I wear it all the time. And I wanted to support a fellow crochet through the shop and um and so i got some from her and i've now got them on sale took them down to the southern wool show they're coming up to perth with me and it feels really good to be supporting 
my fellows in the crochet and crafting community and that's part of what I want to extend in the shop and through the podcast as well so that's really nice but because Yael is naughty she also sent me uh, one of her little notions pouches which are lovely not only does she make amazing crocheted beaded necklaces um, she also sews beautiful project bags I have two of them already and um, now I've got this little notions pouch and you know dear to my own heart one of the things that she does is she keeps back all of the little scraps of linen all of the fabrics and then she makes these kind of hodgepodge patchwork um bags out of them and it's fully zippered fully lined really beautiful little notions pouch and unbeknownst to her exactly what was after because I need to split down my um 2.25 mil sock knitting needle kit and a 2.5 mil sock needle knitting kit and this is going to become one of them which is just perfect and then I've got another little bag for the other one so like I say unbeknownst to her I was looking for a notions pouch and now I've got this one I love it really nice so that was incoming as well. I seem to be doing rather well, even though I'm not buying yarn. <laughs> There's still no lack of stuff uh, coming across the threshold. Um, but yeah, it's good. And then when I was over in Yarn Folk, and then when I was over in Yarn Folk, I met a lovely, lovely listener and watcher of the podcast called Jean. She's an absolute sweetheart. She came and brought me a can of pop when I obviously was flagging and a bit dehydrated on the Saturday afternoon. And she also found me two massive paper clips. I think this is done by a lady called Rag Buttons. I can't quite remember, Jean, sorry. And I don't know where I've put the stuff because I've been using them. And they are covered buttons that have then got um, paper clips big massive paper clips on them they are perfect for um showing where you are in a pattern and just like what i mean by that is if you've got a multi-page pattern like blurred lines i don't use staples because it's just a waste of resources in my opinion but then if i've got multiple pages they might get all mixed up when i put them in my project bag these are absolutely perfect for keeping me on the right page at the right time and stopping me flicking through to the wrong page um, and one's got a sheep on it and the other one's got a black and white cat not dissimilar to a black cat of our acquaintance so yeah thank you for them they're lovely and very usable as well so like I say they were put to use when I was doing um, the rest of Blurred Lines and that is it for Feeding the Habit if any of you are going to Yarndale, you need to keep me on the straight and narrow because I'm not by yarn. I'm allowed to buy other things. I've got my eye on some pattern books. I've got my eye on um, some other little bits and pieces. But mainly what I want to do is be able to chat with people and talk and sit and craft and just have a bit of time off. That would be really nice. But if you see me with yarn... I should not have yarn apart from <laughs> already I'm getting out of that I've got two skeins that I need to pick up for a project for a design that's it um but again I'm not I'm not buying them that's design work so if you see me with yarn it should only be for that project that's it I'm not to buy yarn at yarn deal <laughs> which is gonna hurt <laughs> it's gonna hurt a lot but what I can then do is maybe concentrate quite a bit more on um, Instagram stories. So come over there and tell me, well not tell me, come over to Instagram stories and I'll show you a load of Yarndale and um, really focus in on some of the people that i am kind of got my little eye on for the future when I am buying yarn again. Um, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to add in, given that I'm talking about Yarndale at the moment, is last year I did a little... Um, picnic on the Saturday and I want to do that again um, so if you're up for it and the weather isn't too bad um, on the Saturday at Yarndale picnic let's say half twelve till half one out at the front underneath the tree and I will have picnic blankets and stuff with me come and join me and my friends there were maybe 20, 20, 
yeah, maybe 20 of us there last year. So if you're coming to Yarndale and you don't know loads of people and you just want to come and say hello, it was really friendly, it was lovely, people were passing food around, people were passing stitch markers around and all sorts of bits and pieces and it was just really nice gathering of crochet clan folk. It was lovely, so we'll do it again. Half one till half, sorry, half twelve to half one on the Saturday of Yarndale. I would hope to see some of you there. And I know last year um, there were a couple of people that just got a little bit nervous about coming up to the group. Please just come and approach me. Just catch my eye. I will make sure that I'm facing towards the door. So if I catch your eye and you're looking at me with an intent as if to say, I want to come and join you, but I'm a bit scared. Please just come and see me because you will be, you know, welcomed with open arms. Just come and... Um, join us all and come and do a little bit of crafting and come and eat your lunch because otherwise it can just be a bit of a crush to try and find a seat in your deal by having the picnic it also means you've got people to sit and chat with so do come and say hello you'll know well you'll know who I am you'll certainly hear me talking because I never shut up and uh, there will be a little gaggle of us on the grass outside the front of your deal so come and join us hope to see you there right what else is there? We have done feeling the habit. We have done en route. I do believe we're on to a quick news bit. So oh, stick you up here. Even though I straightened it to within an inch of its life today. Right, quick news beats. So, global hookup. The next one is on the 14th and 15th of September. That's a date change. It is a week early because... Why is it because? Oh, because I'm going to the circus. <laughs> I am... Uh, it was my niece's Darcy Day. Darcy Day, the one that I was doing all the work with for her economics exam. Um, it was her 18th in July. And when I said to her, what do you want for your birthday? I don't know. What do you want for your birthday? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then eventually she came and she said, can you take me to Gifford Circus? Which is something that we've done for ages and ages, but we haven't been for a few years. And it's the most magical circus. And it's held, they, they go from village green to village green in the Cotswolds um, in England. And it is just, it's not a kind of, it's not a lions and bears and captive captive animals circus it's about humans and what they can do and how amazing they are like fire breathers and jugglers and oh they get acts from all over the world and it is magical so that's why I can't do the hookup on the original date because Matthew and I are taking Darcy do down to Gifford Circus um so instead it's on the 14th and 15th and I'll Instagram stories Giffords because it's amazing. It's the best circus in the world, in my opinion. Um, it's just incredible. So that is that one. Another quickie. On Instagram a few weeks ago, I was showing off a soup. <laughs> Random thing for a crochet podcast. But I put all sorts of stuff on stories. And um, quite a few of you said that you wanted the recipe. Links in the um, show notes, blog post for it on my website. It's like a spicy tomato vegan soup. So it's up there. Go forth, help yourself. Um, What else is there? Last podcast I put out, um, there was a competition for Diane's patterns. You could win any one of them. And... Angie Stitch 78 if you are listening you have not come back to me and you have not claimed your prize you were one of our YouTube winners so please drop me a line so that you can get your pattern from Deanne at Ali Day Designs um, I'll give it to the next podcast and then um, kind of your, your chance is up so um, do keep an eye out for whether you've won patterns and prizes and stuff or not um, because if you've commented to me on YouTube, then that's when I'm going to come back to you to see that you've got, um, you've won a prize or won something. So, do keep a lookout for comments on your YouTube channel. 
And finally, under quick news beats, um, just a quick note about the show notes. Sorry, I literally have got fluff on my boobs. Let's just get rid of that. I've got more hair everywhere. Um, final one on quick news beats is about show notes. I always provide links for everything in the show notes and I think sometimes people struggle to find where they are and maybe they're just not hovering over the right bit on the show notes. So what I've done is changed the formatting a little bit from this podcast onwards and if I've said I've provided a link for something then I've literally now, in brackets, written the word link and if you click on the word link that will take you through to what it is that I'm referring to, to the web page that I'm referring to. So look for link in brackets and that is where you need to click. I'm just trying to keep it simple for people and make sure you're getting through to the information that I'm providing. Otherwise, what's the point of me providing the information? So hopefully that's simpler and that makes it a little bit easier for you. And my final bit is J'adore. There's an autumnal nip in the air and it's really quite nice. I looked at it earlier on and the cherry tree, which is just outside my office, has probably already lost 70% of its leaves. The uh, Escalonia hedge is starting to turn yellow. The cherry, the other big cherry tree down the garden, that's starting to turn as well. Blah! The little tingle fingers of autumn is coming. I am a bit of a hibernator. <laughs> Um, I like the summer, I don't do well with the heat, but this time where it's just chilly enough to make more cups of tea and it's just chilly enough to maybe snuggle under a blanket with a certain cat called Pom for a little bit longer in the mornings, I love it, I really love it and I do so much more crafting um, over autumn, winter, spring and I'm just, I'm, I'm excited for it, I'm excited for that nip in the air for the autumnal colours, which are just my jam. I just love all the earthy tones and everything that autumn brings. And I'm genuinely like, yay, autumn is coming. Woohoo! It's not like a Halloween thing. I don't care about that. It's definitely not a Christmas thing, because as you know, I don't give a fig about Christmas. It's just about it being cold and me being... It, I guess it's about it being acceptable to put on extra jumpers and wear all the wool and just hibernate I'm literally so excited about it I cannot wait I just I want a cat on my lap and crochet in my hands that's that's what I'm looking forward to and that's what I'm loving because I can feel it coming autumn is coming um and it's exciting yeah summer is over goodbye sun bring the rain the grey all the earthy tones and the excuses for staying under a blanket. Yes, I am there. It also means we're a lot closer to winter solstice, which is not about yarn. It's actually about days getting longer again. I love that day. I love the 21st of December. It makes me so happy. Right, I think I'm done. Let me just check the show notes because, yeah, I'm a bit wittery and all over the place. Done, done, done. We're done. Right, that's it for me this month. I shall see you in a month's time. I think I'm due back on the 4th of October with hopefully a bit more to show off and and see and I'll be fresh back from Yarndale as well. So I'll try and put a few photos in there for you to have a look at and see what it's like. Um, But uh, yeah, have a fab month and I shall see you in October. Bye. deliver. Hello and welcome to episode 46 of the Crochet Circle podcast. Um, My name is Faye. <laughs> you don't have time for this, just get on with it. Bald moth.
Ooh. Actually, don't you think the bald moth just looks quite a lot like Voldemort? Ah. Uh, no. Come on, brain. Ready. Jeez, you're grim out there. Right. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. Wish, wish, wish. Airplane mode.